Hi there, it's Claude Larson, and I am talking to you today about keeping the viewer in mind. So we make our artwork for ourselves, we express ourselves, it says whatever it is that you want to say, it expresses whatever it is that you, you know, want to share with everyone. But when you step back and you say, is this painting finished? Is this piece of art finished? The idea is to keep the viewer in mind. So I've taken a few pieces of my artwork. I'm going to talk about what it is that I am trying to say and maybe get you thinking when you look at your own artwork, how do I evaluate this? Um, what's the entry point? the first thing that I want somebody to see when they look at it. And then where do I want the eye to go from there? Because the idea is to keep them looking at the artwork. The idea isn't like, I don't see anything here, and then they move on, right? The idea is, what am I trying to generate as far as interest goes? So I'm just gonna do voiceovers over a few pictures, and um, hopefully, you know, you'll get the idea. It helps you when you look at your own artwork, like where do, where do you enter the piece of artwork and where does the eye travel from there? Just something to think about before you say, this work is finished. Because sometimes um, it falls flat because there's not enough movement, visual movement or visual interest that keep that engages the viewer. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. Okay, this piece has a large red rectangle towards the top and that is in fact where the eye goes first. Why does the eye go there? I've surrounded it with its complementary color green and also some cool blues. So the biggest difference in this piece of artwork is the big red square or rectangle. Um, and that is what brings you in. But then your eye starts to look for similarities. It goes down to the orange. Why? It's another warm color. It's similar to the red. It's a different shape. It's a different size. It brings you down to the pink or across to the pink because again, warm color, different size, different shape, but those things group together. However, the piece itself is predominantly blues and greens. Why do you see the red first? Because it has the highest contrast. Why did I put green around it? Because that is the complement to red. So the idea is to keep the eye moving around the piece, but then once you notice those three warm rectangles, you start to see like, oh, look at this squiggly line. That's different from everything else. It's a complement because everything else has hard edges that is sort of soft squishy you know uh, falling around everything else is straight or uh, sort of straight lines because i don't use a ruler when i cut but um, basically rectangular in shape and then what's the difference the round buttons so a small grouping brings interest to that side of the piece of work and the warm colors move your eye around and bring you to other piece to other aspects of the piece. Now this piece is from the same grouping as the previous one. Um, however, the thing that your eye sees first, at least what my eye sees first, is the small blue um, square that is sort of turquoisey blue, sky blue in color towards the bottom left. Why? It's surrounded by the opposite. It is surrounded by warm colors. So it's not that red stands out more than any other color. It's really what's next to it that matters. So this blue square stands out. Notice there's a very large red rectangle on the right hand side on the bottom, but it doesn't stand out so much because it's next to orange and pink. They aren't spread out they're close together. The blue is what you see first, which carries you up 
towards the little pattern at the top that I made with some round buttons. Again, a little contrast, a little variety. Then maybe down to the green and blue stripe. Um, and there's changes in value there. Why is the blue stripe interesting? Because it's pretty dark and what's above it is pretty light. Um, so this is predominantly warm colors, oranges, reds, yellows, uh, pinks, things like that. But the thing that engages you first is the thing that's different. The blue square because it's not like anything else. Yet there's something of interest that's also blue towards the top, something towards the middle. There's some eye movement that goes around and then you start to notice, oh, look at this squiggly line again um, that I made with some fibers. And it keeps the eye moving within the piece. Okay, this next piece, in my opinion, the first thing that you see is the circle towards the top right. Why? Because it's different than everything else. Everything else is a full filled in painted shape. This is an open shape. What did I put it on top of? I put it on top of green. It's a very deep red color. Yes, it crosses over into the orange, but you really start to see it because its complement of green is underneath it. What is it speaking to? It's speaking to the little red, the little dark red rectangle over on the left hand side. Notice how those two are connected by color even though they aren't necessarily the same shape. Once I see the circle, I start to see the green, I move over towards the little rectangle and then I start to see the interest over there. There's a lot of warm colors, but what's different? The gray sort of angled uh, curvature line, um, shape towards the bottom, right? What does that gray speak to? Well, if you go to the top center, there's some very bright chartreuse green. What's next to it? A very quiet, dull gray. What does that gray speak to? If you go over to back towards that red circle, there's another gray piece right along the edge. Then that carries you down to the bottom. There's more gray. Um, and it just keeps your eye moving. Why? Because there's different colors, but it's really about the juxtaposition of warm versus cool and differences. So the open circle versus all the other shapes that are on this painting, the small red part that attracts your eye to the left, which is different from everything else around it. So it's just about using contrast to keep the eye moving. What do you want the viewer to see first? Look at your painting and then make that decision. Make that where they enter the painting, but give them somewhere else to go. Okay, now in this piece, in my opinion, my eye enters this at the top left at that blue sort of offset rectangle. Why? It's against a field that is lighter in color. Yes, they're both sort of cool-ish, right? But notice that the darker blue, there's the little white rectangle to its left. It's then surrounded by a warm green. There's more warm green on the left below it. Um, and it stands out, and that's where my eye goes first. But from those two rectangles, I then go to the top right. There's an orange rect rectangle on a field of pale yellow. Why does that stand out? Because it has a different value. It's darker, even though it's surrounded by something warm. Right? It's, it, it attracts your eye. Next to that, as soon as you see that, then all of a sudden you start seeing this swirly white line. Well, that goes from a white line on pale yellow to a deeper orange, to a darker blue, to a paler blue-green, all the way down to the bottom. Once it gets down to the bottom, you'll notice there's a soft sort of semi-circle of scraped paint down there, brings the eye down. Why does that white show up? 
because in the bottom left corner, there's a darker gray blue. What's next to the gray blue? It's complement, a nice warm orange yellow. So just by putting certain things next to other things, you will keep the eye moving around a painting. What's different on this painting? There's only one swirly line, which is the white paint. There is rows of open shape amidst a lot of soft edged painted shapes. Then there's the hard edge of those patterned circles. Right Down the right hand side, there's some little marks that I made. Again, it's something a little different. It's dark orange or a, uh, I don't know, yellow orange on top, which goes on the blue. It's a little hard to see here, but then it goes on to a muted color, and then it goes on to, so this orangey color goes on to a green blue, right? So you start using complements in small ways, and it keeps the viewer engaged in the painting. Okay, one last piece here. What is the thing that you see first? So on the top left, there's that drippy shape. Why does it stand out? Everything around it is a lighter value. Why do the white circles go on top? They break up that shape. That shape actually becomes less and less apparent as it moves down the painting because it's going on to darker colors. What darker color did I put at the bottom? I put its complement. So I've got a dark blue and a deep rusty orange down there. And you'll notice that next to the blue shape, there's some white towards the center of the painting. And then the values turn to midtone. It keeps the eye moving. So there's the blue shape. Then towards the bottom center, there's some more blue. Towards the right, there's a gray blue. Towards the very top corner, there's some blue, and I have a little orange in there, so I have its complement. What are some other things that are contrasting in here? Uh, it's a lot of soft, soft shapes, right? The edges are very um, blended, but then towards the bottom, I have a very distinct shape. I have a yellow portion of a circle with a darker core to it. I have a squiggly line that goes everywhere from over dark colors to over very light colors, so it keeps the eye engaged. Um, I have open circles that are a distinct shape versus the amorphous shapes around the painting. And that yellow, sort of top central centralized area of yellow, I wanted something to talk to that. So yes, the bottom right hand, that's yellow. But if you look at the bottom left, there's also that very small triangle that just wants to talk to the other yellow. How, do you, how does the eye move around? That's what you are concerned about when you say a painting is finished. Is it engaging enough? Is it interesting enough to have you looking at it for a while? How does the eye move? Um, consider that when you make your paintings, and I suspect you will be much happier um, with the outcomes. And you'll also know when your painting is finished, or you know when you're getting very, very close. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Have a great day. Bye.